All right, everybody, welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel and a special episode that I wasn't sure was ever going to happen. But uh, actually, you can see, uh, well, I can see my breath in the, because the sun's behind the camera and all that other stuff, but it's kind of a little chilly morning here in Florida. Pretty, uh, pretty sunrise and clouds getting going. But let's get inside and talk about what we just did. Well, you guys already probably know that we finally went over 300,000 subscribers. And yeah, like I said earlier, I wasn't sure we were ever gonna get there. Got really close a couple years ago and then took some time off, killed the momentum of the channel, went down a few thousand and now we're back up and that's awesome. All right, well, I wouldn't be a good YouTuber if I didn't mention that we've got a new shirt that's available for pre-sale for the next couple of days until February 12th, 2024. So if you want to support us that way, winwithksr.com, click on the merch tab, go get you one of our new, I'd race a tricycle to win a popsicle shirt. It's a quote from a previous video that some of you guys said you wanted a shirt of, and so far they've sold really well. Excited to see some of those out in the world once we get them in. So along with the pre-sale, everything that is on the KSR merchandise site is 10% off through February 12th. And if you order the new shirt, along with other stuff, the, your whole order will ship in a couple of weeks-ish once we get all of the shirts in from the pre-order. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate all you guys that have been along with us for this journey. I can say with 100% certainty and being completely honest with you guys that I was blown away by 100,000. Heck, I was blown away by 5,000. And, you know, getting hooked up with Garrett all those years ago, working on Mullet and building it, you know, laying its foundation for what it's become has been really cool, as well as some of our other shop projects that we've had going on here. We've got quite a few in the works, as you can kind of tell. That's, uh, this car came from Hawaii, came over on a boat, and we will talk about it later this car got fluids in it today and we are waiting on there was something we were waiting on i can't remember what it was anyways we'll talk about that maybe later next week ralph's el camino is back in which we'll show you about some of that next week as well but today's video i'm gonna do that q a that i said i was gonna do back in december december Hmm. So, yep, yeah, we're going to go through some of the questions that uh, you guys ask me. I'm going to answer them, and then that'll be what this episode's about. Kind of different, but kind of wanted to do something to celebrate 300,000 subscribers, let you guys get to know me even more. I'm just some guy from Gainesville who likes building cars to go fast. That's the basics of it. But let's get into the Q&A. All right, so I got me a little cheat sheet for... A few of the questions that uh, you guys answered, answered, asked. Because if I answered all of the questions that you guys asked, we'd be here for a week. But it's awesome that you guys are so involved with us and asked questions that, you know, some of them were, some of them maybe a little silly. But, you know, maybe there's another episode with answering those at another later date and time. I don't know. We'll see. But let's get into it before we drag this video out for an hour. Favorite tools. Things that we use the most here at the shop. Um, I gotta say it's a conglomeration of all kinds of stuff. And it's not a sponsored deal, but probably my Milwaukee stuff. Like power tools. We've got four of the, you know, the Milwaukee side grinders. We've got them chucked up with cutoff wheels, flat sanding discs, and we use the heck out of them. Like fabrication's probably our biggest thing here. We do, you know, quite a bit of the wiring stuff and some of the wiring tools I really like too, like some of the fancier crimpers and stuff. But 
the Milwaukee stuff, definitely, uh, definitely my favorite and has been the best of the battery powered uh, tools that we've had. I've had some other brands, used some friends, other brands, like the Milwaukee stuff. Next, uh, do you think it's better to build lightweight or have a lot of horsepower or a combination of both? Basic physics is a, it's a combination of both. You can go pretty fast with something lightweight and not a lot of horsepower, or you can go really fast with something lightweight and a lot of horsepower. You get to a point where you have to have the horsepower to go fast, but you can go pretty fast on a budget to be as lightweight as possible. There's been a few different episodes through the years or magazine articles, even back in Hot Rod and Carcraft Magazine back in the day, where they took a car stock and just started stripping weight out of it. Taking the seats out, taking the spare tire out, taking the doors off, taking the hood and the fenders off and you can kind of see what weight does to something like that. In the drag racing world, I definitely think there's a balance. I think you can be too light for some combinations. That's something I haven't really, really checked into. I mean, we haven't had any firsthand experience with anything really sub 2,500 pounds. I don't think my Cutlass will be able to be that light just because it's gonna be a steel roof and quarter car. But when it comes to like the radio racing that I like to do, you know, that 26, 2700 pound range, it's pretty nice when it comes to going fast and uh, not leaning on the engine too hard because the heavier you are, the harder it is on everything in the drive line, the engine, the transmission, drive shaft, the axles, the wheel studs, everything. It all's got to factor in. So, favorite band. It's a little different for channels, but you know, kind of personal stuff, I guess. Uh, this goes back all the way to me shortly out of high school or even in high school. And it's a local band called Sister Hazel. And I've probably been to at least 10 of their concerts. My favorite concert so far in my life has been Sister Hazel and Foodie and the Blowfish at the O'Connell Center here in Gainesville, Florida. It was an awesome, awesome show. And I mean, there's some other bands that I like too, but Sister Hazel on the old Spotify playlist, that's probably my jam most of the time. Any like real 90s alternative rock, that kind of stuff, that's, I'm, I'm always good with that kind of music. So uh plans for the 632 that i wanted indy you know i don't know it's been i've gone back and forth with it it's sitting right over there in the box still i need to at least probably get it out of the package and spin it over make sure that it's freed up and maybe pre-oil it because I don't want to let the thing sit there for forever. You know, we need to move the rocker arm so that the valve springs aren't pushed more. I don't know. I don't want to put it in the burnout car because the burnout car has kind of been this high RPM thing with the uh, LS. And um, a little bit of a spoiler alert, I'm not going to talk about it, but I have a motor in the works for that car. Um, Let's just say the rev limiter is going to be even higher. That's all I'm saying. But the 632, I thought about selling it. I thought about giving it away on a merch giveaway. The, the giveaways, just not having any experience with them. Like one thing you guys may not know about giveaways is to do all the legal side of it before you ever do one thing is about five grand. And that's to handle all the lawyers, the you know, the stuff to make sure that it's all legal, the filings you have to do with the state or whatever else. I don't know. We talked to some lawyers about it. Like we want to make sure we're legit with it because we came close a couple times to doing some giveaways. It's one of those risk versus reward things. Maybe that'll be our 500 
thousand subscriber thing, we'll do a, a giveaway. Like maybe we'll do a build to do a giveaway. Got some ideas. You know, the shop right now still primarily is customer work. So we've gotten to the point in the shop here where I've got three really good guys in the shop cranking. We got CJ who's been with me the longest and he's kind of grown up here in the KSR family. He's Kimber's son that's, you know, part of Soccer Mom. And then we've got Eddie that's been here a couple of years. He's really taken on kind of the role of managing the shop more when I'm in and out. And uh, he actually went to the University of Northern Ohio, I think it is, UNOH, through their technical program there. And came in with some good knowledge and stuff and has been rocking out, which you guys saw him in the video with the Danger Rangers. And then Ricky is our latest addition. He, uh, he came from South Florida, worked at a place, a boat place, building, building uh, boat towers and really good aluminum welder, really good with the fabrication stuff. So with these guys cranking in the shop, I can do more YouTube stuff. Um, I primarily do, uh, you know, dyno tuning and kind of a little bit of managing and like showing the guys how I think things should be done and they take the idea and run with it. Um, Will and I both kind of tag team the wiring stuff when Will's here. Uh, a couple days a week or one day a week depending on his schedule when we don't have him building engines because we've been building quite a few engines lately which has been killer appreciate all of you guys that have you know contracted us to do an engine but um yeah i think with the uh oh i forget where i was going with all that but anyways like yeah things are rocking in the shop i'm gonna be able to do more youtubing um but yeah, maybe that's part of the giveaway thing where we can actually build something to give away and, we've, and we document it on YouTube. Stay tuned to see what we work out. Uh, let's see, favorite power adder. Come on guys, everything needs a turbo. We got a t-shirt with it even. It's one of our best selling shirts. Everything needs a turbo. Available at winwithksr.com slash merchandise, I think, anyways. Yeah, like I love turbo stuff. And it's more, every power adder's kind of got its place. Naturally aspirated stuff is cool, like for the burnout car. Um, I love the sound of high RPM stuff. Like that's that's a hard sound to beat. Um, I like supercharged stuff for like, like mildly supercharged stuff for street. Yeah, I like some supercharged stuff. Nitrous, I like nitrous stuff up to like 250 horsepower, 300 horsepower, just because I feel like at that threshold, you've really got to be on your tuning stuff when you start blasting, you know, 250, 300 horsepower through an engine. It depends kind of on the base power of the engine. I guess if uh, you've got a small block that makes 400 horsepower and you're trying to spray 250 horsepower, you better be on point with your tune-up. If you've got an 800 horsepower big block and you're trying to put 250 horsepower to it, you got a little room for error there. But, you know, nitrous stuff is great if you've already got a nice little combination, you know, you're riding around with and you want to give it a little bump without having to redo the entire car like you would with a turbo system. It's kind of like a staged progression, I guess you could say. But turbos I like because they make tons of power, but they're also quieter. I know that's a weird thing to like about a power adder but i like that turbo cars at least street car turbo stuff you know to make the kind of power we make let's say for example with soccer mom if that were a big block combination or a nitrous combination or supercharged combination it'd be loud because there's nothing in the exhaust to muffle the exhaust but with a turbo you get kind of a built-in muffler so kind of like that and then when you Tip the go pedal, she makes all the power. Really like that part. So, um, how did I get involved with road course racing? And Lee and all that stuff. So that started out back in 2009, 10, 2009 or early 2010. So not long after I started the shop at the old location, um, 
some other local guys, actually Grant that owns the Corvette here and the NC Miata in the back. Um, he asked me to, if I wanted to be a part of a project where we were, well, they were building or putting together a 24 hour lemons team. So I said, yeah, my contribution to the project was the fabrication side of things. It was a 1992 or three Nissan 300ZX. You guys haven't even seen it, but it's over at a friend's shop, sitting in a trailer. Car's still all put together. Probably should maybe go through it a little bit before uh, um, before we bring it back out again. But she's all put together. She raced Daytona the last time we had her out. But that kind of developed into a relationship with another guy that was actually um, keeping some of his business equipment at the old facility, a guy named uh, David, and he had a couple of Vipers that he and his wife raced in the um, Viper series, Viper Cup series. He ran the Viper Cup series with an ACRX, that was 2010, 11, 11 or 12, I don't remember. But he raced those and then his wife had a GT1 uh, Viper, that was like a Gen 3. Actually, a car that uh, Dodge campaigned for a little while. So that was kind of cool to be a part of. And it just kind of kept growing and got more and more experience. Kind of figured out through the Lemons car that uh, I could drive pretty well. We used a lot of data analysis with a GPS data logger that basically logged the car position and speed and uh, G-forces. And Grant and another guy named David were better and I looked at the data and I'm like, all right, well, if they're going this fast and breaking this late, I need to go that fast and break that late and take the corner that fast. So data is always your friend because it can help make you faster. Like it just will. Speaking of the guys in the shop, CJ and Eddie are, I had to go move my truck because uh, they're gonna work on CJ's pool boy, his S10 down here on Saturday, which Y'all haven't seen that one in a while, but she's uh, she's gotten some upgrades since the last time you saw her, and CJ's been working on it at his house some. But they're coming down here to work on roll cage stuff. So, more of that in the future. <clears throat> um, YouTube and KSR. Has YouTube been good for KSR? Absolutely. And, you know, Basically, it's not only has it fed the shop with like merch sales, you know, t-shirts and stickers and all that stuff we sell. It's been great for, you know, we sell some extra parts that we wouldn't if we did not have a YouTube presence. And our backlog list of work is really long. <clears throat> you know, it's it's um, like the business management side of things not gonna lie it's tough and you know we've got tad and eric in the office and they handle all that stuff and it kind of leaves me to focus on like the work that's out in the shop but <clears throat> goodness but the um the thing with youtube you know is a lot of people see us on youtube they want us to do work on their stuff and that's awesome but it you know kind of really backs up our schedule and it's a hard balance to find because we could probably bring 20 projects in here right now but i don't have the people to work on them and even just managing what we've got already you know hasn't been the easiest thing in the world so if we got 10 employees we would need a bigger shop we're already kind of cramped in this shop and this shop is 5,000 square feet but we are we're not using all of it but we plan to actually open up into the back a little bit more uh grant with the corvette and the nc miata was renting some space back there he built a shop at his house so he's going to be taking his corner home so that'll give us one more lift back there uh, actually, I think Tad's Camaro is going to be in that lift for a little while while we swap engines and put a Holley EFI kit on it. You know, complete exhaust system, 
another project that we'll plan to do on YouTube, <clears throat> or at least document for YouTube. So yes, it's been awesome. Um, it's cool to have you guys, you know, follow along with some of our, our customer projects. There's, you know, the customers like seeing their stuff on YouTube, some of them. You know, there's that saying about customers always being right. Well, in this industry, and probably in a lot of them, but this is the one I know, so it's what I'm gonna talk about. You know, you've got a customer who's not done some of the things to the level that you've done them, and they want all these boxes checked for their project. They wanna keep the air conditioning, they wanna keep the power steering, they wanna keep this, they wanna keep that, they wanna keep all these things, they wanna keep their power windows, they wanna keep all their stock dash, just for an example. That all can be done. However, the more check boxes you put on a project, the more time it takes, the more it costs, the more difficult it's gonna to be to work on. You know, and you, when you think about your factory car, your factory car has an engineering team that builds it. And, you know, for each specific make and model, there may be millions of dollars in development. And some of you know how difficult it may be to work on your factory car. And then you take a race car or a car you want to improve the performance of by changing all kinds of stuff on it with, you know, power adders and aftermarket fuel injection and data acquisition and all these different things. The car is going to be more difficult to work on. Some people understand that. Some people don't. You know, it's part of the game. We do our best. We still make mistakes, we're human. You know, I don't think I'm, <laughs> certainly don't think I'm a person that's never made a mistake because I guarantee I make plenty of them. You know, now that we have a presence on YouTube, we are able to be a little more selective with the work we bring in. Initially, I was, I would do work on completely stock vehicles. You know, I'd change the starter, change the alternator, change the oil, do whatever we had to do to keep the bills paid but now we're able to really focus on just doing high performance work, which is really cool. And uh, now that the shop's doing well, I can play a little more with YouTube. Anyway, a little bit of a long answer on that one, but yes, uh, YouTube has been good for KSR. Um, next one, channel memberships. And have we ever thought about doing weekly live videos? Yes to both. And I think that may be something that I look to here in the very near future is let's just say every Thursday we go live at a certain time. Um, Thursdays I always have my kids, so I have to work all that out. Maybe it's Tuesday. I don't have my kids on Tuesdays, so maybe we do lives on Tuesdays. But that may be something that is like a channel member uh, perk. So that's something we're kind of kicking around. You know, we've We've looked into doing the Patreon thing to help out uh, the YouTube stuff. There's some channels that do that. Um, we're working on bringing someone else in to kind of help me with um, the, you know, doing the reels and the Instagram posts and TikToks. And because I kind of feel like we need to be a little bit of everywhere. You know, YouTube's kind of my thing, but to have someone that can, you know, chop up some videos and put them up on reels and stuff like that. And then that also helps out with, you know, doing channel memberships and all that other stuff. But yes, definitely something we're thinking about doing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Somebody's trying to get a hold of me in my text. Uh, soccer mom in the sixes. Yeah, that's a goal for 2024. And we thought we were on track pretty good, you know, till we had our little whoops at the last day of sick week. Thankfully, that's just a little bit of uh, welding on the cylinder head and bolting the cylinder heads back on and being a little less aggressive with the tune-up, being a little more responsible with the plug reading, and then we will start turning up the boost and turning down the timing so that we can make even more power. And to get us there, I think we will probably put the fiberglass front end and doors back on the car. By the time we do that, as well as remove all of the street stuff, like the street fuel system in the back of the car, 
um, the passenger seat, belts. Uh, we can take the radiator out. If, by the time we do all of that, I think the car can lose right at 400 pounds. So that should get us pretty close without even having to add too much power over where we're at you know, right now. Car was 3,150 to 3,200 pounds during sick week, depending on the fuel load, the street fuel load. So if we take all that out and then, you know, turn her up to 30 pounds of boost or so, she's 30, 35 maybe. I think we've got a legitimate shot at running sixes with the car. So stay tuned for that. That's, uh, I'm actually going over to Will's this afternoon to do some more investigative stuff on the other cylinder head to see what the breakaway torque is. May video that, but we'll see. Anyways, um, last two questions. Do I regret not moving to Bradenton to work with Cletus? There are days, yeah, for sure. But were I to have moved down there to Bradenton, I don't think I would have the YouTube channel because you know, none of the guys that work for him do YouTube. So, you know, I enjoy the YouTube side of things. Admittedly, I'm stuck in Gainesville because of my kids and my divorce. So at least for another 10 years, I've got to be here in Gainesville within, you know, a 50, 50 mile radius of this area. Kids take priority over my work, but there's certainly times where I'd love to be a part of some of the things they've got going on. Uh, that atmosphere is different than the business side of the shop here. Like having so much, well, let me rephrase that. So the way, you know, Cletus's shop works is they're only building the stuff they're doing for YouTube because he's had so much success on YouTube there's it's their projects and their toys you know you got the giveaway stuff but those are all you know really nice builds too that are there's still not the pressure of the customer you know what about this what about this you know well it it ran a little funny this morning when when i cranked it up like you know they're on the phone you know maybe wondering about the tune of is everything okay well you don't have to deal with that down there at a shop like cleus's which there's days where that would be really nice. And I love the Bradenton area. Like, you've got the beaches close. You've got, you know, some rivers you can go blast around and go boating with, because I do enjoy boating. But, you know, the short version is, my kids are the most important. And I do like the Gainesville area as well. Got a lot of history here, having grown up in this area. So, yes and no is the answer to that question. <laughs> but primarily, no. I don't, uh, I don't regret not moving down there. So last question, shop plans for 2024, which we kind of briefly touched on a little bit. Um, well, we're finally at a spot, I feel like, where the shop can manage itself enough with the projects. You know, I don't have to be so hands-on in every single project that I can work on my cutlass. The last couple of years, I have just been buying parts for it. Actually, more like the last 10 years, if we're really honest. Um, we've got an engine. We've got a transmission. We've got a rear end from TRZ, which I actually I'll probably sell because I want to go ahead and do a floater rear end in the car. Just because I only want to do it once. So if anybody needs a really nice stock suspension, TRZ Motorsports 9 inch and all the suspension stuff, the control arms and everything to go along with it. Hit me up. I'll sell it in a few different ways. I've got it complete with brakes, third member. Anyways, it's a good unit. Send me a message if you're interested. It's not a cheap unit. It's 40 spline axles. You know, it's like $6,500, $7,000 worth of stuff. So keep that in mind. But yeah, it's, I've got so many parts for the car. I've got all the fuel injection. I've, I don't have a turbo yet, but I do have the stuff to build all the hot side. I may do a titanium downpipe, so I don't have the titanium yet. We'll see. Um, I've got a whole 
tubing rack full of tubing over there to do the new chassis. I have a new stock chassis to put under the car. I have the carbon wheel tubs. I have the carbon uh, sheets for doing like the trunk and all that other stuff. So that's going to happen. Like there's gonna be some serious work put in on the Cutlass this year. Maybe even as early as next week, drag the chassis underneath it, start getting the remainder of the stock suspension stuff off of it you know like the stock control arms and the stock fuel lines and brake lines that are still on it i've got a chassis sitting outside that's literally been out there for a year maybe not a year but it's been it's been too long at least six months but that's going to be something that happens like i mentioned earlier we're working on a new engine for the burnout car so there'll be a little bit of a build series on that trying to extend the rpm range even more on the burnout car so that uh I'm excited for that. Going to use kind of some different stuff, like the old cylinder heads off of Soccer Mom's engine. I think's the plan. Get them welded up, which you guys saw in another video where Ricky was welding up the, the old top fuel hoops that were in uh, the grooves for the top fuel hoops that were in Soccer Mom's heads. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> Got plenty of racing to do. You know, we're running all the Cletus uh, circle track events. Gonna run, gonna try and run all the Ranger events. I kinda have the goal of getting both of the road race cars back to a Champ Car Endurance Series race. Maybe Daytona, maybe Sebring later in the year. I would just, I kinda wanna do another endurance road race. Those, they take a pretty good amount of prep work to them, so. We may go run some events with uh, the Lexus road race car at the firm, our local road race track. So maybe get some videos on that. Um, more soccer mom drag racing. You know, we try to always run LS Fest. Kind of have the idea to maybe do another drag and drive. There's a couple on the radar. I've just got to check my scheduling, check Will's scheduling, or see you know, who else could go with me on uh on that event so you know lots of lots of stuff to think about but i am really excited to you know actually be able to put some time in on the cutlass i tried earlier you know like last year and not gonna lie that's kind of one of the aggravations that youtube became because I made you guys a promise that I was going to work on the car and then I couldn't because of the other stuff that was going on in the shop or at least I didn't feel like it was the responsible thing to do as a business owner to be playing with my car on YouTube when shop stuff needed attention. But where we're at right now, I feel like I can work on the Cutlass and still the shop maintains its progression forward and the YouTube stuff hopefully maintains its progression forward. But I feel like I've rambled on long enough for this video. Kind of a fun doing a Q&A thing. I actually have some fan mail that uh, I need to do in uh, another episode. So maybe we'll do that. You guys have sent some cool stuff over the last little bit. Got um, a couple of really cool things that I wanna show you guys and give credit to the people that sent them. So maybe another one of these sit down videos here coming up soon so that maybe we can you know touch or touch again on that maybe finnegan style fan mail type video but uh that's gonna wrap it up for this video can't thank you guys enough for the the journey to get us to 300,000 and all you guys following along and commenting and sharing and liking the videos do all that stuff because it does help and i enjoy talking to you guys in the comments when i can but uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next time.